Dear friends, welcome back. In this video, I'd like to take a look at the machine on the one hub, which is NetStart. The link will be added into the description section below so that you can download and play the machine if you want. I think this is another Windows buff overflow attack machine. So if you want to learn and practice buff overflow techniques, this is for you. Before we go ahead, if you don't mind, please subscribe to my channel and leave a like below. You are greatly appreciated. So enough talk, let's just get started. We can switch into the Kali Linux VM. Above all, we need to discover the IP address of a target. The utility I'd like to use is net discover. I auto complete this command. Let's press enter. So as you can see over here, the IP address of target could be identified as 132. This IP address belongs to the Windows virtual machine. Later, we, we, we will use the Windows to install and run the executable or vulnerable executable. So what we are going to do next, we need to do the port and surface scanning with a map. To save time of this video, I've already done that earlier. So for now, we just uh, cut out the result. So as you can see over here, I use the options like scene scan, the version scan, the default script scan and followed by the dash p dash to do the full range port scan. And the last option for all is on to output the result into this file. The IP address, as you can see over here, has been changed from the, from when I did the machine the first time. So from the scanning results, we can know that the target has two open port number, the first one is 21, which is running FTP surface and also the version information. And also from the default script scanning with the FTP surface, we can tell that the target allows anonymous FTP login. Later, we can check, we can check it manually. And the second one is 2371. And um, I think this is the custom application or surface. So the map cannot make sure the exact surface information. So what we are going to do next, we need to do the emulation for the FTP surface. And uh, we can use the search sprite to check whether this surface, this version of VSFTPD has vulnerability or not no results. Next, we can connect to the target by FTP, and we can use anonymous as, use, as username, and no need to input password, and we can get it down. We just use the mget. Okay, now we can exit from the FTP session. So, of course, we can easily know that the two files which we downloaded belong to the Windows executable. So later, we need to transfer them to the Windows virtual machine or the host machine, if you, if you wish. And uh, I will not repeat this process. So now, we can, of course, another port number. Maybe we can take a look at the, another port number. We can use the netcat to connect to. Yeah, we need to provide the password. Okay, it's done because we don't know the exact password. So now we can go into or switch our virtual box to the Windows virtual machine. As you can see over here, that these two files 
uh, transfer from the Kaninix VM. So now we can click and uh, run as administrator. Okay, no problem. And uh, also we can go to the CMD. And we can use NetStat to display all active port number. And I think here you can know that the after we run or execute this executable or software, uh, this port number is open. Okay. So next, I think we need to check whether this, of course, from the banner, we have already been told that this is the vulnerable software. However, I'd like to follow the methodology to test. So we can, for example, we can connect to the target. Oh, this time, I'd like to connect to the Windows virtual machine rather than target. Press enter, and we can put something like AA. And we go back to the Windows machine, nothing happened, okay? So next, I think we need to do some fuzzing. And uh, the, the Python is very good choice to do. And we can go to the PyCharm editor or IDE. We can import the socket and import sys module, which can capture the, the input of user or by user, OK? Next, next we can we can try pass except except index error and then if there is such index error and then we can print out the usage usage target ip and port number a guy the program name, and then we can exit the program. If no such error, and then we can capture the user's input, sys, a guy, and the port number. Of course, we need to convert uh, this port number to integer, sys, a guy, Okay, and no error, and we can define the length of the data. For example, we can start from the 100 bytes, and next we can while true, and we can initialize the object of a socket, 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 IPv4 family socket, TCP as transport layer and then we can connect to the target target ip and port number and then of course we need to receive the the banner and then we can send the payload the payload is we can send the uppercase a and the lens lens Okay, and then we can send payload in code because I'm using Python 3. So before we send any data, it should be encoded or it should be converted into the bytes. And then we can print the progress. So data sent the, the lens and then we can close this collection and then we can maybe I'd like to import the time module and then we can time sleep uh, sleep one second and then the lens can plus 100 okay i think we are good to go now let's run it 
let's run the program and uh, make sure the the application is running it's running and then we can run python and let's press enter Okay, I think it's disconnected. It's done. Connection refused because our software is dead. And it means that uh, this software is vulnerable to the buffer overflow attack. And the buffer size, the size of the buffer is around maybe 200. So next we need to confirm our discovery or our uh, guess and uh, so now we need to make some modification and this time we do not need to make loop we can on indent okay the lens no need and the payload should be for example 200 2000 sorry and then we can remove this line and no need this line anymore and also no need to use time module and the next now we need to launch i think it's running no not running and then we need to launch our immunity debugger immunity debugger make sure we run as administrator otherwise we cannot access this process we do not have permission to access the the permission okay and now we can attach the process this process logging click attach and we can click run and from the bottom we can tell that it's running without a problem so now we go back to our canon linux and then we can run the exploit or poc code it's done and now we can go back to the windows machine as you can see over here the eip eip stands for extended instruction pointer which uh, saves the address, the memory address of the next instruction or return address. This is the most important factor to the buffer overflow uh, attack. We need to overwrite this uh, address and then we can point to, for example, point to our shell code to the uh, ESP and then we can execute our shell code to get initial foothold okay next we need to do another confirmation we can i think now we need to next thing for us to do is to locate or find the offset exact of offset and uh, now so i think when we do this when we try to find the offset a uh, very important tool comes into play which belong or which force in the metasploit framework we can use the share metasploit framework tools exploit pattern create and the lens we can use switch a dash l to specify the lens of data Press enter. As you can see over here, it's there, and then we can copy the data, and then we can paste or put into the payload variable. Okay, now we can save, make sure the immunity debugger is running. We need 
to restart. And then we can we can click run. It's running. And then we can send our exploit code. Press enter. Now we need to go to the Windows machine. As you can see here. And we need to copy this address, copy selection to clipboard. And then we can paste into our notebook. Next, we need to calculate the offset and another related to meters point. Tools exploit pattern offset. And we can specify the, the strings. And now we can press enter. So the exact match at offset is this number. We can put it here. Maybe we can do the confirmation. We can remove, we can do like this one. So the payload is uppercase A. And and followed by the EIP address, we want to fill in the uppercase B, and the length is four bytes, and we can put like a C. We can save. Now we need to restart our process. And click run. And then we can go back, go back to the kernel Linux, and then we can run our PUC again. And now we can go to our community. As you can see here, the EIP is filled by the uppercase B. You know, the hex forty two stands for the B uppercase B. So our buffer overflow is successful. And so next, what we're going to do next, we need to find the bad characters because the bad characters will affect the execution of our shell code. We need to remove uh, such bad characters from the proposed, uh, proposed build uh, shell code. Okay, so let me demonstrate for you. And uh, I've already we need, I'd like to go to the two sets, the bad characters. You can get it from the GitHub, and we can run this shell script. As you can see here, this bad character, this is the particularly built strings or data. And then we can copy and paste in the notebook next we need to yeah we need to put into the c and the no need to multiply okay it's saved and we need to restart the process so we need to you know this process is Time consuming, we need to spend a bit of long time to finish. However, I'd like to dem demonstrate the entire process in detail. Okay, so now we can, it's, it's running. Now we can go to the Kanye Linux and run, not here. So here we can run. And now we go back to our windows and we need to go to the ESP. ESP means the, you know, the stacker pointer and we can follow in dump. And uh, one, two, three. So we need to find the characters out of play, out of place. So one, two, three, four, five is there.
So I think I find the the first bad bad character two D. Okay, two D. So should be two D. Two D. Which one? Two D. Yeah, this one we can copy. And uh, we can the bat char characters, okay? So I need to confirm again. The two two D, yeah, it's there. And then we can go to the POC and can remove two D from the payload. Two D, and then we can remove. can save and then we need to restart the process and click and then we can go to the Linux, and then we can launch the attack again now we need to go inside the Unity we can find in dump. So to see two D, also two E is bad character, and we can go here. So this should be two E. We can copy and put in here. I need to confirm. Yeah, two E is not there. So now we can remove. Two E. Okay. And now we need to restart the process again. Click and then launch our attack and then follow in dump. So this time. I think 46 is bad character, 44, 45, so 46, 46, right, 46, 46, where is 46, we can copy, yeah, I need to double check, the 46, yes, so now we need to Delete 46, okay, and then we need to restart process and click run, and then we can launch the exploit, exploitation again, go to the immunity, Follow in dump. So forty six. So forty six. Also, I think forty. Sorry. So forty six is not there. So maybe forty seven is another forty seven. Another bad character. We can put in here. So we need to remove. Seven. Save and restart. Click running and and launch. Following dump. So now, so. For 58. So I think 50 line is bad character. 50 line. 50 line. Yeah, this one we can copy. I need to make double check. 50 line. Yeah, 50 line. So then we need to remove 50 line. Save and we can 
we start the process. Click. And then we can launch exploitation again. And then we can follow in dump. So this time, 5D. So I think 5E is bad character. 5E. 5E. Where is 5E? Yeah, we can copy and put it in here. I need to double check. So 5E is 5E is bad character. Okay. So now we need to remove 5E from payload. Save. And then we can restart the process. And click. And launch. the attack again and then we need to follow in dump so 5d 5f 5f so what comes after 5f so this one should be the bad character we can copy and put in here. I have to double check. So 5F. 5F. Okay. So we, I need to remove 60 from the payload. We can remove. Then restart the process again and click run. The process is running and then we can attack again and uh, we need to follow in dump. So I think I've already found all bad characters. Okay, of course, besides uh, these uh, bad characters, always the X00 is bad character. Okay. So now I think we need to we can generate the shell code uh, before we before we. Of course, we can use the MSF vellum, and uh, we can, of course, we have to know that the target is running the Linux, and the Linux, inside the Linux, the wine, you know, simulation environment is running. We can generate the Windows uh, reverse shell, shell code, or we can directly generate the Linux the shell code and we can Linux and the X68 Maybe I can auto complete in this command and uh, of course uh, the character bad characters we need to copy from my notebook and put it in here. Okay. Now we can press enter to generate the shell code. And we can copy 
this shell coat. And then we can, of course, I would like to remove. And the payload is a, so the, And uh, four bytes, right? And then we need to put some non operation, for example, 16 bytes and buff. Because here is bytes, so we can use the byte as well. So, next, of course, we do not need to encode again. Next, a very important thing to do is to find this uh, GMP ESP address. You know, this address, um, uh, we will put this address, the address for the GMP or jump ESP into the EIP. And then because the EIP is overwritten by this address and then we can run our shell code okay so next thing is very important so how to do we can go to the windows and we can restart the process again we can use the plugin mana and the modules I think the first module is what we want. And next we need to find the address. So we can use the mana, find, and the string. Of course, we can use the another two. Use share mid exploit. Tools exploit. GMP ESP. So the address should be this one. And we can find FFE4. X. X. E4. E4. Okay. And the the module should be this one. We logging, logging support, DLL. We can press enter, and we can copy the address, and we can put into our payload. Of course, remember we need to reverse this address because uh, this is the little indium. And we can, for example, the X B eight and X twelve, X fifteen, X sixty two. Okay, and uh, we can put put into. So the address for GMP ESP is this one. We can save. Now, I think now we 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 just um, you know we need to, we just um, attack the target. Do not need to, because we have already get got everything what we want what we want. Like a shell code, like a bad characters, and also the memory address for the jump ESP uh, statement. Okay, so now how to do? We can go to the Kali Linux, and uh, we can let start, and we can. So the, the 
ms vellum sudo 555 okay we can open another tab and then we can run poc and followed by the IP address of the target so the IP address of target is 31 or 32 I think we can use maybe discover So the 32, we can use Python, you see. Oh, I think I forgot to put the, okay, it's there. And Let's press enter. I can see we got the collection. Wonderful. And we can check ID. And we can check Python. Python 2 is, is there. So we can spawn interactive shell. PTY module. PTY spawn. In bash. Next, we need to do some local emulation. For example, like a fox, we can get the first flag, and then we can run sudo. So we can run this command without supplying the password of a root user. So then we can go to the website of GTF Obins. System CTL sudo, and then so can I run this one? Sudo. Sudo system CTL. As you can see, now we can retrieve the root flag. Cannot, oh, sorry, cat not cd okay so that's pretty much it i'd like to see you in the next one bye have a nice